Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are trying to get into software development, iOS development, software QA, and other stuff, check out the link in the description tab below. They are offering courses. Um, you can actually live on campus over there. They are hooked up with employers around the country, um, around the world really, and they're going to help you try to find your first job in this industry. So uh, make sure you give them a look, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, and the link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm talking about why programmers hate JavaScript and really the, the JavaScript ecosystem. And when I mention the JavaScript ecosystem, I actually include Node.js. So like anything from NPM to Yarn to anything that's using Node.js, um, a lot of programmers really hate it. And I think that I just want to give it like a brief demonstration of why not just like senior devs sometimes hate it, but even just like junior devs can just be, it can be head, head scratching. Uh, let me give you an example of why. So according to the 2018 Stack Overflow survey, which is really probably the best survey that's out there, um, so they're saying that nearly 50% of all developers are using Windows as their primary operating system. I actually use all three. I use Windows, Mac, and uh, Linux, and obviously Mac is very Linux-like, but I use all three operating systems, uh, Ubuntu, Mac, um, and, and like Sierra, I guess, some version of Sierra or something like that currently, and then... Um, and then obviously Windows 10. So say you're like a senior C-sharp developer, Java developer, something like that, and you're jumping into the modern JavaScript, JavaScript ecosystem with Node.js, and you're like, you know what, I've heard so much about Vue. I'm going to give this Vueify project a, a look because Vueify combines three different things. It's, it's Vue.js, which is the popular framework, which really rivals Angular and React at the moment. Uh, but then it also com combines uh, Materialize, which uh, is the Google CSS library. So it, it combines the two of those together. And also, I know I showed Materialize just a second ago, but that was based off of this material design project that was released by Google in 2014. So to get started with Vutify, I just need to open up my Visual Studio Code to the folder that I have. In, uh, it's my Vutify folder here. I'm going to go in my terminal, and I'm going to npm install, and this is going to be a global install. And I'll say hyphen G for global, and then I'll say at uh, view forward slash CLI. And this is the command line interface, the latest version from Vue.js, or really the Vue.js community. So it's very similar to something like create a React app or uh, any sort of other like boilerplate project for Angular, or other JavaScript stuff that requires a lot of boilerplate. All right, so then once you have the command line interface installed, we can just go ahead and say view, uh, create, and we'll say create a music project. So when you create a new project, it's going to give you some default options. The Babel ESLint project uh, default is uh, just simply using ES6, which is really you have two options these days. It's uh, Babel with ES6 or TypeScript. And for a new developer, you probably have no idea. And then for a senior developer, you probably heard of both, and you're probably still confused of which one do I go with. Uh, my opinion is um, whatever one you like better, to be honest, because they're both pretty good. So depending on your speed, um, internet connection, speed of your computer and all that stuff, this could actually take a long time. Which I will point out is one of the many reasons why people hate the JavaScript ecosystem. Uh, when you look at like something like Yarn or Node for package management, you have the Node Modules folder. And uh, every Node Module has its own Node, node Modules folder and dependency structure and everything. So like... Um, you end up having like this massive, like you, and, and you end up downloading half the internet for a project that you might need for 16 lines of code. There's a famous story that there was a project on a repository. It's called like a pad left and, um, somebody had it out there. It was like 16 lines of code. Hundreds of projects were referencing it. The dude who actually owned the repository ended up taking it off. And since a lot of these other projects like pointed to that one, it broke like all these builds for all these different major companies and everything because 16 lines of code got removed from the internet. Um, so instead of just actually taking the 16 lines and like embedding that into your code base, people were just pointing to it through like a node modules dependency and like this dependency um, structure can end up, you know, causing major, major problems. All right. So then you're like, Oh yeah, good. We got everything going. We got our project spun up. We can actually spin this thing up because if you look inside the main, you can see that it attaches to the app inside the public index and there's your app it all binds to that so everything all works you think uh, well i mean you could spin this up it works it, it runs a server and you're like good to go now i just need to add 
I need to not do that. Now I need to go into my terminal. I'm like, yeah, everything's good. I'm gonna go ahead and view add uh, and then beautify. And mind you, like 50% of all developers are on Windows and you're like, what the fuck is this? Like I just, I went to do a view add and like all of a sudden like I did an NPM to install this this joker and like it's using yarn internally and a um, lot of confusion obviously for not just like beginner developers for but for seniors as well. So defenders of the JavaScript community, I hear you. This is like a minor thing, but this is just the typical bullshit that people have to deal with. Um, for one of the most popular projects out there being Vue and then Vueify and using you know Yarn, obviously there's some sort of problem here. Um, whatever it is, 50% of the developers, if you're either a senior or you're brand new, this shit don't work. Like I mean, it doesn't work out of the box, like out of the gate. Like you're you're hosed, and um, and it's not just this project. So it's not like I'm trying to bust on Vue or anything like that. This is like this across the board more than anything like than I've ever seen. I remember one of the like one of the big selling points of why people wanted to learn Perl in the late 90s and early 2000s was because of its backwards compatibility. They were like, every time we get a new version of Perl, blah, 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 we're not going to break all our old stuff like it's still going to work. So like you can just adopt the new version and not have to rewrite everything you've ever done. Um, with JavaScript, like this stuff, like nobody cares about that. And like, I understand the mindset, like there are people are like, this isn't the, the late nineties, early two thousands anymore, obviously, but like whatever, but the configuration alone is just like, it's just, it's madness. It's chaos. And the reason why is because JavaScript itself is probably not really the best language. Um, and it's kind of like inmates running the asylum type of thing. Like, I'm not trying to bust on JavaScript. I literally get paid to write JavaScript, but I'm simply saying that JavaScript is not a better language than Python or Java or C Sharp or many of these other languages out there. Like JavaScript's not a better language. JavaScript allows you to do some awesome stuff, the debugging in the console, the monkey patching, the the duck typing, all that stuff is great. Dynamic interpretation, the... Um, the magification or whatever of like when it like when it assigns variables like randomly without when you're not using strict mode things like that um all that stuff is great and i know that like things like have actually made some major improvements like we have classes in javascript but it's still a prototypical type language really like not really like even classes or, or objects so it's like anyway it's just it's just weird um and it's not really like i bust on javascript for having classes or having objects for for classes but um, Python's like the same thing. So technically Python's classes are an object too. Like everything in Python's an object. So what do you do to get past all this now that nothing works? Uh, well, number one, you could go to my web development course, which is actually going to show you how to actually use Webpack Dev Server, all this stuff, so that you don't have uh, your, your Webpack config file uh, hidden from you. Like you don't really want that. Like I don't like that about the Vue CLI. I don't like the fact that it like, hides that stuff from you. I want to know what's going on with my webpack config, but in that course, like you just set it up yourself and like you could do that with Vue just as easily as you could do it with React or Angular.